Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none of you know Madel Walker. Man, on. I got And get y'all it. don't forget to oh. like and subscribe. Oh. Follow us on all social media platforms. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh, hell. Yeah. You know, we're doing our thing. Oh, man. That new introduction. Thank you very much. But make sure you subscribe to Patreon and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to Miss Jamaica for changing up the strategy when we come in the dough. We're going to do it midstream, too. Yes, sir. Man, we got a guy here today, y'all. He don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here don't work with so many different people, man. Well, you know what I mean. The man don't work Pimp C, you know. He here. And I don't play by Pimp. He here. Him. Y'all don't understand, man. Uh, uh, Lil Wheel, uh, Rap A Lot, all them boys, man. This man that did a lot of different things, man. This is a hell of a producer, man. Biggie Beast is in the building. Hey, hey. Man, what's going on? Oh, man, it's, it's going. <laughs> man, I know it is, man. I love your demeanor, man. It's just so nice, man, to uh, uh, have you uh, in the building, man. You know, uh, I don't know if you watch Boss Talk 101, but if you do, you know already how we start, man. I'm going to hand the baton over to uh, Miss Jamaica, and she starts it off. They done, they done checked out a little strategy out now. Niggas is biting our style, nigga. They, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Go ahead. Because I like to know about you as a person before you became the producer. Growing up, born and raised in Dallas? No, actually, I was born in uh, Pomona, California. Pomona? Yeah. I, yeah. I've seen Pomona when we're driving through. I've seen that yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, about, it's about 30 miles or so east of L.A. Uh, right, I've of, seen that. Yeah, it's the last city uh, in L.A. County before you go get to the Inland Empire. Oh, okay, so, yeah. okay. So how old were you when you left? Uh, I was young, uh, six, seven. So, do you remember anything about it? Oh yeah, because we always would go go back, back. and forth. Yeah, because okay. my, my mother's my mother's uh, my mother's from uh, Pomona. Okay. You know, she grew up in Pomona. She moved to Pomona when she was a baby. So, so grandma and grandpa still was there. So you had to go back yeah, and forth. Yeah, her whole side of the family was in. Okay, so yeah. she moved you out here. Well, my mother and father. You know, my and, father, father. and father. I just had to check there. because you know how nowadays in. A lot of people who sit in that seat, mom and dad broke up, and so they don't really travel oh, together no, no, and all of that. No, my parents uh, they were together 54 years. Awesome. My mother passed away four years ago. Ooh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah, I'm sorry. thank you. And uh, yeah, so they were together 54 years. That's awesome. She, uh, Yours was that's together good, 48 years. Right. But that's a, how does that feel for you to see that? Um, because growing up, I'm sure you didn't see that all everywhere you were. No, I mean, it was a, it was a blessing, but. You know, it was it was it was normal for me. You know, looking at but yeah, when you all the different brothers and sisters in the right. neighborhood, they didn't necessarily have that going on. So, you know, when you reflect back on it as an adult, as you get older, you know how uh, that's when you treasure how valuable it, it was, right? Yeah, because as a kid, you don't really care. You don't, you don't take notice of certain things when you're a kid. You yeah. just everything is about you. It's, yeah, it's just it's just the way it is. Yeah. So, um, were you mad when you had to move out here? They had to uproot you? I know he's six years old, you know. He ain't tripping no, at no, six. No, I didn't, I didn't care. Brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have a younger brother and an older sister. Okay, so you're a middle child. I'm a middle child. Yeah. Okay. So, um, mom and dad together. Tell me something that your mom instilled in you as a young child growing up that still stuck with you even up to today. Yeah, stand on it. Really? <laughs> Regardless to whom or what, you know, stand on it. And that same, same, you know, with my father, that's that's what they were about. And, you know, all of their lives, you know, um, you know, the principle comes first. I like that because some people who say, mom gave me this, but dad gave me this. But I like the way how you said it was both of them because it takes unity because when you married, you not become one, so you both have to be on the same accord, when, especially when you're raising kids, because so many times in relationships, mom want to do it this way and dad want to do it this way, but I love when I can see a family who they can agree on how to raise kids the same. Yeah, no, my, I, I asked my dad, um, it, was, uh, it was sometime after my mom passed, mm -hmm. uh, I asked him, I said, you know, what was it about mama that made her, you know, who she was, right? And he said, um, her unextinguishable uh, desire to be free. And he, he meant, he, and what he was saying was free from, uh, you know, free from oppression. You get what I'm saying? Free from all the madness you know, that's been, you know, uh, imputed in us, man, ever since, 
you know, ever, right. ever since, ever since, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we've, uh, we, we've been over here on these shores, right? And so it was, the, it was, you know, unapologetically unapolo- black. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. You know what I'm I saying? And they that. were aligned in, in that regard. Mm-hmm. That no matter what, you know what I'm saying? We have to be free and we have, and our children have to be free. Wow. And they, you know, they have never, you know, put the shackles on the minds of their children. You wow. know what I'm saying? And they were aligned in that right. regard, just to put it simple. No, I like that. And I like the fact that you asked those questions because I always um, speak to a lot of people older than I am. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people always say that they don't ask their parents certain questions. They're like, it's not my place. Even although they're older now, they mm-hmm. just feel like, you know, that's my mom, that's my dad. It's not my place to ask certain questions. Yeah. But in order for you to grow as an adult or be able to pass certain knowledge onto your kids um, or not fall in the same traps of, I'm going to be this way because this is what I saw, but not realizing that the reason why your parents were a certain way is because they're following their parents. Yeah. And, but if you ask mom or dad, what did, what did you like in mom? Mm-hmm. And I love what he said, but then some people would say, well, circumstances is why I was end up with her and I stayed with her. But growing up, you're not realizing these things. You don't know these things because you're seeing a certain relationship and wondering why is it like that, yeah. but not asking those questions. And I always encourage people, if you, can, if you still have your parent here, mm. ask certain questions, find out why, because you don't want to grow up and be a certain way, especially if it's, it's causing um, you to not grow as you should. Yeah ask these questions thank because God. it can help you. Thank God for the time you had to spend with your mother, man. You know, uh, I lost my mom when I was 24. Yeah. So that was a lot of time that I didn't get to spend with my mom mm-hmm. because I lost her so early. Yeah. So I, I, I tell anybody, you know, just cherish those times that you had because it could have been a lot shorter. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it could have been a, one a lot different. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, because you never get your mother's love back. Oh, Nobody never love you like mama. And that's the whole game for me. Like I, I didn't know it when I, I didn't, I took it for granted when I was uh, really, you know, young. Yeah. But now that I see everybody else, I can't stand to see somebody mis, misuse their mother, or even remotely look as if they're not gonna do right by them. I don't even want to be around that type of person. No, no doubt about it, man. So I just, you know, when I when I think about just some of the things that, you know, you said, thinking about when you kept talking, you said something about instilling something in a child or the blackness. Thought about that song, uh, that song, Wake Up, Jumped Out My Bed. I'm in a two man cell with my homie, little half dead. Yeah. You know how they start? Yeah, yeah. You know, the song start off when they, if I had to die you, for this little kid, and I, yeah. I'm a dead, you right. You know what I mean? Don't it start like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had to, what he say? Yeah, if I had to die to, for this little if African. I had to give up my, my life for this. You know, this is talking about the kid. kid. Something like, I'm a dead motherfucker. You're right. And then it come up <laughs> just like that. Yeah, I'll never yeah. forget that because it made yeah. me know that we was in a different place then with the music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we stood for, uh, it was a different time where a man stood for something in that music that was being created during that time. Yeah. Even though it was talking about the chronic or whatever it might have been talking about, there was something in there that they was going to give you that made you feel good about being a brother. Yeah. It wasn't talk, and it wasn't called conscious rap back then either. Nah. It was just the way we felt. The public Enemy, we come off something that was different, and I think that's something that I would love to see come back into a trendy way into what we deal with today. What about you? No, nah, yeah, most definitely. You know, I think you know in that era, right? You are talking about the early '90s, you know, even late '80s. That's right. You know, that's exactly we were coming right. Coming through. It was, you know, it, it, it was a reflection of what was going on in the community, man. That's right. And, you know, as it always is, I think art, you know, art reflects life. Yeah. Right? And so back then, more so than now, and it was a more, um, it was more of a, of a consciousness or an awareness, man, that, hey, man, you were black. That's right. And that we were in this community, man, and that we were in this struggle, man, you know, with the, you know, whether it was the police brutality or you know whatever it was it was it was it was a constant you were constantly reminded of course you know every day in in, in various ways that man hey man that we are in a struggle man yeah yeah you know yeah. what i mean and i don't think you know that wasn't a, that wasn't a bad thing i think i think people sometimes want to uh you know be comfortable but don't really want to be free 
There it is. There it is. Yeah. You know, Martin Luther King spoke on that um, about the churches uh, in the, when he was in the Birmingham jail. He talked about the fact of how, you know, how the, the clergy was accepting things, you know, just as they were. Yeah. Just just to get, you know, get along to get along. It wasn't yeah. trying to change anything. It wasn't helping our communities. Yeah. And I think that's still something that blurs out today in society. Yeah. I don't feel like it's changed. I feel like we still, our leadership is just mannequins. If you look at black leadership, it's a joke a lot of times. Where is it at? They're like mannequins. When you look at, the, the you know, they you go in a store, the mannequin has on what you would like to buy. Yeah. But the mannequin can't walk. The mannequin can't talk. They look like they're in power. Yeah. But there is no power when it comes down to the way they are versus the white constituencies. Let's be real. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you don't really, you don't see that, that, that come together like that. When you see George Floyd, that happened, they went down and everybody in the world say we gonna change. But when you go back into a lot of these different places, we still have precipitated racism, sometimes blatant racism. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's still something that I still feel like um, we have a long way to go when it comes down to standing together for anything. I'm just being real. My, hey, that's me, you know. Hey man, one hundred percent. You know, and, and if anybody whose eyes are halfway open, yeah, is aware of that. Yeah, you know, and I think, but like, I, you know, like I said, many times we just, we just want to be, you know, we turn a blind eye. We live in la la land, you know, just to be, you know, comfortable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't yeah. want to deal with that, man. That ain't how it is, man. I'm over here doing yeah. my thing, you know, yeah. that kind of. A lot thing. of people say that, and and just not understand, man, like. Like whenever, whenever, man, it doesn't matter if any brothers and sisters are suffering, you know what I'm saying? Anywhere in the community, just because I may not be going through that particular struggle at that particular time, man, that doesn't extricate me, man, from the experiences of black people. You get what I'm saying? That's real. And, and, you know, we all in the same boat together, man. Man, I, pe people you know? would laugh at me, and I didn't mean to cut y'all. No. But yeah. people would laugh at me when I, when, I, you know, people start dying on drugs, fentanyl and all that, or whatever the case yeah. may be. There's an outcry. There's cries from our people, our young people, mm -hmm. that says we're on drugs. And people look at him like, oh, he's just on drugs. You know what I mean? Or, or, he just, or she just on drugs. But you have million and billionaires that came up off of our race yeah. that's in position that won't even come together and speak on the subject. Yeah. I'm being real. No, yeah. And I'm sitting up here looking at it, and, and I, I did a whole... Did a whole interview that I mean a whole little remember that little thing I did where I went viral because I was talking about it even before boss talk I was just standing up talking saying that where they at bro like you see these people you see them taking pictures together wearing Rolexes together hanging out together but when people start to die around them they can't even come together and speak on it yeah. they should have a, a a podcast or something where they come together strong black men and say something Address. but the, it, it seems as if it's something that they're benefiting off. Y'all don't want to hear that. I ain't gonna go there. But man, look, I, I was I was telling uh telling some folks the other day, right? Um, that, you know, you know, we look at things like it, it, on an individual level. Yeah. Like I was saying, like you know, oh, it's not. This is not what's affecting me at the moment. So, wow, man. That it, but see, this is the thing about it, right? When you go from coast to coast, New York to L.A., mm -hmm. like in all points in between, mm -hmm. wherever the black, wherever you have a black community, right? Mm -hmm. You have the same problems. Right, regardless of where you are, That's I'm right. talking about among folks that don't live in close proximity to one another, folks that you know haven't grown up together. So mm -hmm. these folks, the only you know connection, the common strand is that we're black folks. That's you know right. what I mean? And so that speaks. That right there says that, hey man, this is not an individual thing, man. This is an institutional thing. Mm -hmm. It's a systemic thing. That's right. right. And so once we you know, and they, you know that's not rocket science, right? And so once we realize that part, then we have to say, well, why is it that way? And see, when we start to really unpack those parts of it, right, the, the why of it, right, that's when we start to really identify the root of the problem and the societal forces that constantly uh, act upon, you know, saying black folks in the black family in order to perpetuate the problem. And so when we deal with that, that's the part black folks don't want to deal with because at some point, man, you want to look around and you want to point the finger at white folks. Man, that's real. And that's something, you know, many, that's many real. brothers and sisters, man, they scared to do that. Yeah. They don't want to deal with it, so we keep pointing the finger at, at each, each other. other. 
That's right. You know what I mean? Man. Put it simple. Yeah. We leave y'all out of there for a little bit, baby. You no, still with us? You know, I'm we over here, you know, we talking that we got the fish up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got the fish up over here now. Yeah. You know, I got this brother here, you he talking that black talk when he did it, just it pulls it out of me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I really, you know, I speak a lot and and I love to speak on targeted subjects like that, but then I have to watch myself. Gotta keep the balance right. Okay. So Let's talk about the music a little bit. Let's go. Man, uh, you come into this game. How old was you when you first started to produce, man? Let me see. Uh, and how did you even get into it? Uh, I was in my late 20s, man. I was really? about 20. That late late? Yeah, yeah, that's I wanna late. Say, I want to say I was about 27, 28. Really? So who I, inspired you? Why you just, well, what it's, happened? It's a strange story. It's, well, it's, it's a, I'll tell you the story. So my brother, my little brother, right? Okay. He was rapping, right? And we were looking for beats. Right, you know, I didn't know anything about music game. I didn't know nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? This was in the late '90s, right? Yeah, Very, yeah. Like around man, '98. Yeah, 99, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, late, yeah, 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 late, yeah. Late for 90s, sure. Right. And so, I knew a brother, uh, brother uh, by the name of uh, Q. I don't know. He, he had yeah. a, he had a, a uh, he had a, a company called Mouthpiece Entertainment. Okay. Real, real good brother, man. You know. Q. And so, uh, you know, we were we were building. Uh, I, I can't even remember how I ran into Q. But anyway, however, but anyway, so what I started- What part of Dallas? Uh, the Cliff. Okay. Yeah, from Old Cliff, you know what I'm saying? I so, know a few Qs, I don't know which one that might be. I so, might even know it. And so real good brother, solid brother, man. We we started, uh, I started managing him. Okay. Right, and him and a couple uh, couple of his artists, right? You know, it was just, he said, hey man, you know, I like the way you handle business, I like the way you conduct. Now, I don't know anything really about the music business other than things, so I you know, got up to speed, started reading and this and that. And so, uh, you know, I was managing my brother. He plugged me in. I was managing Q and him, and I was, you know, and my brother at the same time. So he plugged me in with this brother named Spliff. Okay. You know, Spliff. Not, Spliff. I know Spliff D. Spliff D. Yeah, producer. He no, I don't know Spliff to oh, the bro brother, you know, a lot of cats know he's no, been around. Yeah. Spliff been around a long time. Okay. Right? Real talented brother, right? Oh, right? So I started managing Spliff and uh and uh, you know, Spliff was making beats. Well, I, I went and bought some beats from Spliff for my brother first, okay. and then I ended up managing Spliff, right? Cool. And you know, uh you know, the business just didn't work out. You know, sometimes it just, yeah, you know, that's, things that's just life, don't man. work out, man. And uh so now I had bought a, you know, some equipment. I had all this equipment in the house. Man, I went back there, started fucking with it one day, <laughs> man. You get what I'm saying? And then, yeah. uh, you know, uh, man, shit, I had the knack for it. So when you when you f first started, when did you know you had some? Well, I, you know, I always was a lover of music. You okay, know what I'm saying? And, me too, and, and, uh, me too. You know, had an ear for music. Yeah. And I didn't know, as far as creating music, of course, you know, in in uh, you know, in uh, elementary school and middle school, I played instruments, but you know, nothing of, you know, it wasn't never. Yeah, you hitting I that pursued, thing, bing bong, you know. No, I actually played the saxophone in middle school. What? Yeah, you know what well, I mean. I played but, the saxophone. You were the latest man in the yeah, middle school. but I wasn't. But I wasn't. I wasn't dedicated to it. Okay, I, you know, it was just something I had to do, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I went back there and I just I started messing with it. You learn the equipment. You know, learn, you know, read all the manuals. You know, my thing was, I, I, I've always been a reader, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I absorb information, all of it. So I, so that was my, that was really my, uh, my advantage. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I, you know, read this stuff, man, started messing with it. Hey, man, it just kind of. And that thing started hitting. It came together, man. So, so who the first Big person, when you say big, and they wasn't big at the time, probably. Uh, but who was the first one that you you nailed it with a good beat that went somewhere? Uh, this brother, uh, I was uh, I produced for this brother out of Compton, right? Okay. He uh, his name was uh, Fudge, right? Okay. And he he had uh, he had uh, had a um, and this let me see, let me let me make sure I'm nailing on the, the right person. As far as I remember, man, this was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was Fudge, right? And so he had did a, he had done a song with Rapping Fote. Okay. And I produced that song, and that song was- He a, did a song Rapping Fote. Rapping Fote. You know, this was in the early, early, early 2000s. It may, it may have been right around- Man, I'm Rapping Fote. It don't make me none. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, so dun. Was, you remember Rapping Fote? Yeah, you used to hit that with Shout Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that was the first, uh, you know, uh, 
named or known artist, you know what I mean? I had, I had worked with was rapping was a fudge, his brother named Fudge and uh, rapping Fote. Man, yeah. I, it was rapping Fote, the rapping Fote that, that did that song I just was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So he was that rapping Fote. Yeah, so yeah. you knew you had yeah, something, yeah, did you? Yeah, yeah. So you felt good about it. Yeah. But you was like, man, I, I got I, I got me yeah, one. Yeah, but you know, I, I knew I had I knew I had something producing for my brother. Okay. Because my brother had something. Okay. My brother, my, my brother wrapped his ass off, right? He just, he, you know, he just kind of never just, you know, he just, you know, just eased out of it. What was you your know? brother rap name? Uh, what was his rap name, man? And don't give me the line, man. <laughs> you I just know he can rap. He's my brother. I always yeah, used to yeah, call him. Yeah, he called by his real name. Yeah, yeah. So. But you knew, you are like, man, I, I, I was making so, so many good beats for him because you was giving it your all for your brother. Yeah, hey, man, matter of fact, uh, you know, if, uh, when he was still in high school, rap a lot tried to, uh, you know, want to They tried to sign, to sign him. Yeah, this was back in the 90s, man. Yeah, when he was in high really? school. Really? Yeah, when he was a senior That's in high hard, school. That's hard, man. That's a different. Uh, what year was that? Uh... See, my brother graduated, I think, in 97, so it had to be somewhere Ooh, around 96. Ooh, that's a, that's, somewhere that, hey, boy, them boys was rapping back then. Yeah. Scarface them? Yeah. What? My brother was cold, man. He had to be. He was cold. Get on that roster, boy, them boys, that, that's, that, that's that real stump down yeah. rap a lot there. People don't realize that. Yeah. Mr. Lee, deep in on that at that time. Yeah. Deep in it. Yeah. So... When you think about like like so when you look at the music right now in Dallas, how do you how do you, and we gonna jump into this and jump out of it? How do you feel about it from from producing the songs you did for Tom Tom, Lil Will, whatever, uh, uh, and 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 just Dallas now? How do you how do you look at it? Uh, you know, it's always there. There's always been talent here. Yeah, you know, and I think. Um, you just talking about the music itself, or yeah, the, the music, music and itself, the, and the music, the music, the business of it, the the music and the business of it. We we are in an independent whatever stage, and a lot of people sit right there where you at, and I'm afraid to some point a lot of them are still trying to make their way. A lot of times, a lot of them look the part and are dibbing and dabbing in other things to make the budget to even deal with the music that they're yeah. entertaining with. You know, so it's just like, how do you feel about where it is versus the 360 deals? You've seen all this stuff happen. Well, you know, I think that that um, one of the things that is um, handicapped. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, you know, the rap uh, scene or the rap, you know, in Dallas. Rap okay, business, okay. As far as the business is, uh, you know, is the lack of unity and the conflict. Man, okay. And the hate, right? Because... You know, I think the, the, I mean, like, like I'll speak on like when the Dougie and, and yeah. the bus in that era, the Boogie, mm. era, right? You know, once uh, you know, Little Will, you know, started taking off, and um, you know, folks started hating man on the on the brother. You know what I mean? Like from a standpoint, oh man, that's that's that Boogie music, and that ain't what we. You know, it was just a lot of that going on, right? You, you hearing that in the, you know, folks are putting we don't dance, man, we we gangsters, we G's, and all that. Yeah, instead of looking at it like, hey, man, this is a brother that has a song, right, that's catching on nationally, that's bringing attention to the city. You know what I'm saying? Support the brother. When the attention comes to the city, now you can bask in the spotlight. Now now you can get a look. Because now, you know what I'm saying, because of, the, because of what he's done and the songs that, uh, that, that uh, you know, that are, that are getting traction, that's causing attention to be on the city. Support that movement, man, and then do your thing because now you're gonna be able to, now you're out of the darkness, right? Now you're into the light. Somebody can recognize what you're doing too. Whereas if, if no one ever brought, did anything to bring attention to the city, to the rap scene in the city, yeah, you would have been, you know, you would have been uh, uh, floundering in obscurity. How did, how did, how? I get it. You get what I'm saying. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. But but when you think about the the Dougie time, the movement, when you did that song uh, mm -hmm. and and you made that beat, because the beat, you know, it's a slamming beat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dun, 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 dun. You 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 hell, you were hell on wheels back then, and now probably be even worse. But you killed that. Like like, did you know that that was gonna be a song that they were gonna dance to? No. No, I didn't know it. You just basically made a nice song well, that with a nice beat. No, well, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, a little, I remember. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, little Will, Rude Boy, uh, Spain. I think it was. I think it was just them, right? And, oh, they came through the studio one night. May have been some other folks in the studio, but but I know they were in the studio, right? Say, man, we got this song. 
it's the, you know, Dougie, man, this thing is, because they had it, it was, it was, they already had a version of it that was starting to gain traction in the clubs, right? And before, so they, your, before you, you yeah, produce your yeah, beat. They so, and so they said, man, we need you to, you know, do your thing, right? And so Spain, uh, I remember Spain uh, in the studio, I said, man, what, what, what is the Dougie? You get what I'm saying? And they, uh, Spain started hitting. He started <laughs> hitting that thing. You know, hitting the day. I can't do it, but you but know. The nigga, <laughs> my daughter didn't do it, but yeah, Spain was hitting yeah, that Spain old. Spain was, uh, he was hitting it, right? And I said, you know, the, so I'm looking at it. I'm you, hearing what, the, you know, I'm getting the vibe of it. Okay, let's do it, right? And so we did it, but I didn't really understand because I hadn't seen it in the club. Yeah. Right, I hadn't seen what they had seen in the club, right? And, you know, I wasn't. You know, they, you know, they went to clubs and, you know, kicking it and doing that thing, right? And so one night, we all went out to the club. I'm talking about a whole bunch of us, man. Went out to the club. It was a, some, what, what club was that? It was a club off of uh, 635, uh, close to the Galleria. But there was a mall, like, across the highway. Uh, what was it? Rockefeller was at the club. I don't know. Club, I, Rockefeller. I, I never went to that when I one, tell you one that. Of them it was it was right off the uh, off of six thirty five, right by Preston and all that. Yeah, right over there, right. And so uh, you know, we go to the club. Man, the club is packed. Man, they run the Dougie. Man, the club went up. Whew. Oh my God, damn! Was this your beat at yeah, this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right after that, they ran busted wide open. Ooh, tell and, man, bring the it club back. even went up further. You know what I'm saying? Busted wide open was that man eat man. You eat. did that one too. Yeah, yeah. We did those back to back, right? And so and so then I got it. And they were running those songs like they played them, and then they played them, played a couple other songs, and they ran Looped it again. Right back. Man, they, they, man, these folks, were, man, these, these folks were going crazy, crazy in the club. Then I understood it. I understood it. I so understood you have to it see it to get it. Yeah, I did. Because, you know, like when you, you know, in the process of making the music, you know, you really, like, if you don't really, you know, you don't really get it. Yeah. You know, you just like, yeah, okay. Did wow. that motivate you to be like, hey, we need to get back in the studio, like, right now? I mean, you know, it was a whole lot of things because just to be, just to be honest, that wasn't the, uh, that wasn't really the type of music I was making. You get what I'm saying? That's the way God like do. we would like like so so when when we had it came through like we we were together. It was you know my my uh, record company and Dixon Records. We were together. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like we were all like we were you know all clicked up. So so that's what we that's what type of music we were doing. Yeah, you know, we were doing gangster shit. Was that was that before that you was was when you were dealing with rap yeah. a lot more, right? No, I didn't start dealing with rap a lot until after until, that. Until after that. Really? So before that, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, there's a, there's a there's a project that 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 uh, we put out with a uh, Dixon Records called uh, the Other Side of the Game. We put that out in 05. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? It's me and the, the homie uh, Mr. Mac T on the cover. Okay. Those are the homies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was gangster. Yeah. It was, you know. You know what that's all about. So you know, those are the homies. So so. That's the kind of music we were doing. He, like we were in the studio all day, every day. You know that's what I'm saying? Right. Making that. Right. So, so uh, you know, and then also, you know, I worked with you know Tom Tom, of course. Yeah, that was stuff. After, that was before or after. Yeah, all this stuff was before. You worked with Tom Tom Man, before my Dougie. Yeah, before I worked with. I did uh, Cotton Mouth. Like Cottonmouth had an album Shout called Cottonmouth, that's my guy. Called King Kong Cotton. Yeah, you remember that album? Yeah. Man, you, I produced that whole album except for one except for one song. Wow. Yeah, what I, song did you do for Tom Tom pre, pre uh, uh, my Dougie State? You know, I did a, a lot of mixtape stuff for him, but I did the song on, um, you know, on the Eat It Get Eight album called Hustle. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I you did. was all the way in. Yeah, and then I did some stuff for uh, for Lucci. You did some what Lucci? Yeah, so you would you could switch it up. You yeah, were matter, switching it up. Matter of fact, I met Little Will through Cottonmouth. Okay. It was on, I did a, I did a song for Cottonmouth, I produced a song for Cottonmouth and, uh, Remember his little his little nephew, uh, uh, Young Pig, right? Okay. It was called Elbows Out the Window. Wow. With Charlie Boy on it. Okay. I produced that, and they shot a video, and I met all them. I met Rube, and, and uh, I met Rube Boy. I can't remember if Little Will was at the at the uh, video shoot, but I know I met Rube Boy at the uh, at the uh, at the video shoot for uh, Elbows Out the Window. That's how I met them. I met them through Cottonmouth. So yeah. after Lil Will. You started switching up your style or being more versatile with your beats. No, you I was said already, you were. Yeah, oh, go ahead. No, I mean, so, no, because you said you were only mainly doing gangster. 
beats. Yeah. And then once you met him, you started switching it up to the dance. Yeah, and you know, yeah. That's so, hard. That's hard. Yeah. And then and then after so the Dougie, and then I did right in that time I did another song for Little O that blew up wow. called Bet You Can't Do It. Bet you can't, bet do, you it. can't do it on the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did that for for Little O, right? Okay. That blew up for Little O, right? And then um and then right after that is where uh, matter of fact I uh, I connected with, with with who became my manager, International Red at Rap a lot. And yeah, Jail Jim's yeah, a red yeah. boy, right? And I connected through uh, I connected up with him through ESG. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Me and ESG had had had, had gotten cool and, and was solid. And so I asked ESG. I said, "Man, you know, I'm looking for management, man. You know what I'm saying? I said, "Man, uh, turn me on to somebody, you know, somebody that's solid, right?" And he said, "Well, you know, Bun's manager, man, because yeah. you know ESG and Bun are, are, are real <laughs> tight. tight. That's right." And so he called up, uh, uh, you know, Red Boy, you know, and uh, and so this was around the time they had the uh, what was that? The Ozone Awards okay. down there in Houston, right? So that's Red Boy and them said, "Hey, man, come on down." Me and the homies them went on down there. Plugged in with the, with the whole rap a lot thing and uh, there it went. There it went, man. I, <laughs> you feel you me? said those on. I thought about Beverly, uh, Julia Beverly. She, she was on here. here. I had her on here the, uh, a few months back. It's just fun, it's something how the South move, man. So uh, give me that. I, I got to get the pimp story out of you right quick. Okay. Like like how was it when you met pimp? Yeah. Like how was it working with pimp and he being a producer and you being a producer? Yeah. How was the the, the how would how did y'all jive? Uh, so, KLC told a story on here on how it was working with it for him. You know, being yeah. a producer. Uh, how was it for you being a producer working with pimp? Oh stuff? man, it was it was a beautiful thing, man. So so I only worked with pimp. One time, okay, like like actually worked with him in the studio one time, and that was like three months before he passed. Wow! And so what happened was now this is before this was uh let's see, pimp died, uh, pimp passed December two thousand seven. This was in October, September or October, uh, two thousand seven, right? Gator Man, the homie, my nigga, right there. So boy. you know that's shout out thing. Gator Man. You did what you do on Gator Man. Man, you know the ball players out. Man, Texas, I produced. I don't produced, do it. I don't produced, do it. I produced, I produced like four or five songs. Don't you know there. that Mark Man? man that's, that's, Gator I'm serious, my Gator, Gator man. man. Man, look here, man. Okay, let me go on and just run. <laughs> the I'm whole a ball player, baby, going hard to the hole. Man, yeah, that one. Nah, I produced. I produced the one with zero. The one with little flip called phone call. One, I, I produced like I produced the one. Um, uh, G's around my neck. My yeah, man, yeah. Photo time, I produced that. Man. Yeah, that is the homie. That was the homie. Gator, Quint Fox, A1, man, that was the homie. Killing it, man. That's and hard. So, so, okay, so let me go I ahead. I should know that that boy had somebody deep behind him in that producer, because that nigga, used to, I used to love to see that boy man, bring I'm that. Man, Gator, man, listen. So check this out, right? So the, the Pimp C song was actually Gator's song. Okay. That he did with Pimp C. Okay. Right, because this is before I I was. Uh, was I, the actual one that they did together the one that came out? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, I, but so, so, but the only thing happened was they added E forty to it. Okay. And so, so let me. Uh, so, okay. So here's the story, right? We get in the studio. This is in 07, right? I didn't I didn't hook up with with rap a lot till oh eight. Okay. Right. So uh, Gato was like, man, you know, I'm doing a song with Pimp. Man, we need to, you know come through the studio. Pimp came through the studio. Pimp laid his verse down. We, you know, it was, a, you know, Pimp was a, was a fool, man. <laughs> what he yeah, do? Yeah, what mean, he you do? Know, just Pimp was being Pimp. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so you know, we worked. Matter and, and man, to make it so bad that we had footage. That's footage of the whole thing what? somewhere, man. I don't know where it is. Some character, man. You know, somebody you know, got it. Somebody, I don't know. Lost what happened it or to got it. it? Yeah, but that's that's footage somewhere. The whole thing, right? And so Pimper came through. We kicked it. You know, we kicked What'd he it. say to you? Give me something that he said to you well, that he, day that he sticks said, out. He said, he said, Big E, man, you know, man, you a cold motherfucker on them boys, man. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? I didn't make you feel to hear oh, Pimper man, say that, on, man. man. That's, that's, come man, on, man. That, that was, man, that was a salute, man. That was, man. Hey, man. To tell you the truth, so me and Pimp that connect, I say, hey, man, I got some more, because he had a show that night. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. At, somewhere, at, at, uh, somewhere out here. And um, so I said, "Hey, man, I got some more stuff, man. That 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 you need to put your ears on, man. I think you gonna you gonna feel." I said, "You said uh, I said, man, just you know." So we exchanged numbers. Okay. And I said, "Well, hey, man, I'm gonna be down in Houston in a couple of uh, in a you know in a month or, month so, or so, whatever. To handle some business. We were uh, 
um, getting some di- distribution together for the for the project uh, we had put out with Dick, you know me and uh, Dixon Records and them put out. Okay. Right? And so anyway, uh, uh, we go down to Houston. Start raining, man. You know how it be raining. Yeah, in Houston, it do be right? raining. It rained a lot. Called, we were supposed to hook up with Pimp. I had called Pimp. Pimp was out in Port Arthur. Yeah. He said, "Man, just come on out here, right?" But then it started raining. I said, "Man, you know." Catch you on the rebound, man. It's rain, man. This and that, but your shit, man. It wasn't no rebound, man. man. Next thing you know, pimp was gone, man. Wow. Uh, about a month, a month and a half or so later after that, you man. Know what I'm saying so. So that's crazy, but yeah. I, I know everybody got yeah, these yeah. stories, man. And you know that that was a thing. So you know, uh, moving forward, you know, uh, we I ended up, you know, having management, you know, red doing my yeah, management, yeah. plugging in with rap a lot, yeah, right? Yeah. Right when I plug in with rap a lot, the first the, so so at the time, uh, Red was managing Mike Jones and Bun. Shout out Mike Jones and 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 shout and out me. Bun B. So I was the you know he was managing Red. Uh, he was uh, Mike Jones. So you were the producer in the midst of yeah. That. And so the first the first piece of work I did when I got to Houston was on Mike Jones' album The Voice. Okay, I did a song called Swagger Right. Right. Really. All and right. So and so then. They're working on this Pimp C, the Naked Soul of Sweet Jones. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Biggie, we gotta, you know, we gotta get you involved in this, right? And I said, and I called Gator. I said, hey man, look, they're working on a Pimp C album. I said they're not clearing anything they got to do with Pimp C, man. I said you ain't gonna never get that song cleared. I said if you want to, I'll put it on the table with Jay now, and let let Jay and them know that 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 we got a song, right? Yeah. All right, cool, right? So I, you know, I ran it down to Jay and Red and them. I said, "Hey, look, I got a song. I let them hear it." Gator hadn't laid a verse on it yet. Gator hadn't even laid it. Was just Pimp's verse on it, right? Uh, you know, he's still trying to get it. Since the night yeah. is not been written. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I, uh, I let Jay hear. They like, man, come on, B. We need, yeah, we need that. And he said, and, and so, and so. Uh, Oh, man, let me tell the whole story, man. I got, I got, I got, I got so, many, so many parts. So when I first met Jay, right, the first Jay, Jay asked me, Jay said, "Say, Biggie, uh, who is the coldest rapper out of Dallas?" I said, "Gator Man." Hey, boy, you so called it, boy. I, was, I, I said, away. "I said Gator Man." I said, "The homie, Gator Man, right?" He said, "Let me hear something." I had Gator Man CD in my back. I remember pocket. when this happened. I, I remember this, bro. Saying? And so we in the, we Jay had just bought uh, had just bought the studio over there. They uh, they called the Takeover Studios. He had just bought that, right? We sitting up in there, and I play Gator. Jay vibing. He vibing to it, man. I can't even remember what songs it was. Right? Jamming though, because I know how this, Gator this, gonna do this it. This is what Jay said. Jay looked at me. He said, "He said Gator Man." Gator man, right? <laughs> and he said, man, so so you see, I get a call, man, about two in the morning, a few days, you know, Jay, Jay operate late at night, right? <laughs> get a call. And he said, man, he said, man, he said, man, uh, Big E, I need you to get Gator Man down here immediately. Jay gonna yeah. do it. <laughs> you get Boy, what Jay I'm gonna do it, he gonna hold yeah, it down, so, baby. So, you know, I call Gator, I say, hey man, Jay wanna meet with you. Right? You what Gator what say? Just, you know, because Gator, I had already told Gator. You know, like, he like he vibed like, to I, it. No, I told Gator like like when I at first you know uh, uh, hooked in with management over there. I said, man, as soon as I you know get a you know get some room, man, uh, get something for you, man. I said, man, I'm pulling. You. Yeah, I said, yeah. I'm gonna pull that's you. All, that's a real friend. I, I, I said, I'm, I'm gonna grab you, homie. I said, any talent. I said, talented. I, I said mm-hmm. as soon as I you know get in, whatever, man. I I, I got you. You know what I'm saying. So the first. Opportunity that came to the table, man. I sh- gave him, man. Yeah, man. I, hey, man. The first time I met Jay was the first. Well, well, actually, the second time. The first time I met him was out on the street. Yeah. But the first time we we had a sit down in the studio. You put that Gator Man I, on. I, it. This the first man I. I know, love hey, Gator Man. man. I had, but I had a CD. I had Gator's music on me right? at all times, man. Yeah, because I said, man, hey, man, you got to hear this, right? And so um, you can't remember what song it was. I can't remember. It was so I remember many that facts of life, man. I remember a lot of stuff. That I, I, I want to say it was it was the uh, it was the uh, Texas album, though. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it was either the Texas album or Children of the Corn or both of them. Yeah, it was it was one of those you know the ball player. Yeah, albums, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so Gator, you know, Gator and them came on down uh, to uh, you know we went all to the compound. Gator uh, met with Jay, man, and hey, man, Jay, Jay. Uh, Man, Jay was a fan of Gator Man's music, man. Yeah, I mean, music. You know, he loved his music, man. Everybody over there did. 
That's hard. Everybody. Man. And so that's when you, uh, so so Gator, so uh, Jay said that now, uh, Gator hadn't had a verse. He, his verse wasn't on the Pimp C song, right? Jay told, he said, hey, look at Gator. He said, man, look, man, look, put that heat on this motherfucker. And we gonna pull gasoline on that fire, man. And we gonna <laughs> blow you up. That's what. That's what. That's uh, the way he talked, man. Jay. Uh, so Gator went did his verse. You know that song, Sister Night. Yeah, right? come on, man. So Gator came did that verse, man. I uh, brought it back to Jay. I said, yeah, Gator got the verse. We uh, let Jay hear that motherfucker, man. Jay said, <laughs> man, you know what I'm saying? And they, uh, he said, man, who you think? Uh, we said we need somebody else on the song. I said, well, you know. Pimp said, uh, you know, gangster party like he 40, make him bring the yellow tape. I said, let's put 40 on it. Wow. Put 40, and they put it out. And, and then, you know, they uh, you know, they started uh communicating with Gator and That was all Gator Gator was Gator was on Gator I was remember on a that. couple of rap a lot. Uh, I remember albums. that. I remember you know that's when saying? I was I was really proud of him when I seen him make that move with him. Yeah. Um I remember that time. Um I wanna say them other boys was doing their thing during that time to them. Uh it was some old, the, the, the that nigga, she just loved me. Damn I think D. It, it was during that time. I produced Damn D's. Uh, it, I produced, it was during that time. Yeah, I produced like six songs on Damn D's yeah. album. It's, yeah, it's rap Damn D, album. shout out, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's when that's when that 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 was that time when yeah. I, when I when I felt like Gator was dealing with that rap a lot thing. Yeah, like, I was right around the right around the same, same percentage. Time. Yeah, I so, was proud of it, man. Yeah. Real proud of it. Now Gator did his thing, and they then you know um, you know uh, you know brothers over at rap a lot, man. Jay and them. Yeah, a lot of respect. Got to have a lot of respect for Gator. Now Gator stand true though. You he stay. He stand like a, he a real dude. When yeah. you meet him every time, yeah. he the same solid dude. Yeah, no and that's, doubt that's, about that's it. That's what I. That's what stuck out to me. Me and him running the circles, same circles a lot of times, just to run into each other like we did. It was always mutual respect and just just seeing him out. You know, I like yeah. I like the way he moved. And even you know, even like Quint Fox, man, like Quint Fox is on is actually on the Swagger Right song. Yeah, that's Quint Fox on the hook. You got, I got my swagger right. Mm -hmm. I got my swagger right. Uh, they thought that I was broke. Now I'm looking uh, right. You know how it goes, but that's Quinn Fox. On. Man, because those, those are the homies. Like, we actually manage Quinn Fox now, me and my business partner, uh, Ken. That's you know hard. What I'm saying? That's that, hard. And Ken is, you know, Jay's. You like well, to manage. Ken, yeah. The only way. He likes the business part. He loves the business part. So, so yeah, we manage uh, Quinn Fox. We manage. Uh, Couple of producers. Well, I will get into that. But what did but, you do for Bun? Because you 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 was over there with Bun and my you yeah. you mentioned Mike Jones. Yeah. Did you do what did you do for Bun? So the first song I did for Bun, I, every album since uh, well from uh, Trill OG, I produced on Trill OG. I produced on uh, uh, Trill OG the Epilogues. I produced on Return of the Trill and Bun B Day. Wow. And we me and Bun have a lot of stuff in the vault. So really, y'all still to this day? Yeah, we got man. Psh, come on now, yeah, yeah, so it's it hard, man. So we we've uh, we've uh, the first song I did for Bun was uh, um, Speak Easy. Okay, that's with Bun Twister and Cedric the Entertainer on the hook. How was how was it? How was Bun when it come down to going to that? Because I done heard stories. Uh, DJ Burn one told me that he he when he go in, it's not a game. He, oh, he nah, gonna do what man. he got to do Bun, with it. Bun, it's Bun, gonna be uh, over. Bun, Bun keep bankers hours in the studio, man. It, 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 not in that long. No, it's, it's, it's business, man. It's you know what I'm saying. Bun are coming in. Bun, okay. Do his thing, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah, Bun's all business, man. That's hard. You've always heard that. Yeah, yeah all, I all like business. that. Bun I like is that. All business, no, no, no playing, no none of that. You know, but Bun is uh, Bun is a solid dude, man. Yeah, Bun is uh, one of those brothers, man. Uh, you know, the rare brothers that you find in the industry that are, you know, what I'm saying, grounded. And, uh, you know, just all around, just a good brother, man. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, when I met yeah. him, I never forget it. I always tell the story. He, We was in Vegas. I met him a couple of times in Vegas, yeah. actually. But he, stuck, he I had all my kids with me, the same mm -hmm. four that I got now. And they grown, two of them. And one of them about to get out. And then the other one, he's still, he's 15. But he getting out in a few years, too. Yeah, okay. And Bun seen us all in Vegas. And my kids, my daughter wanted. She was a big Bun B fan. Yeah. Shout out Chastity. And she was like, uh, Dad, can I take a picture with Bun B? And he, she was running on. He's like, hold on just a minute, you know. Yeah. And we was talking. And then it, then he, he took pictures with all my kids, actually. Yeah. And uh, 
Well, and, and, and once he took pictures with him, I told him, man, you're a stand-up guy. Yeah. And when I told him that, he, I said, you're a real one, man. He said, no, nah, you real, brother. You're the only one in here that got your whole, you know, your whole family with you. Oh, you know, he picked it out yeah. quick. He's you know, seen you know, it. He's a family man himself. And he's seen that. And you he was like, you he brought yeah. your whole, you got your yeah. wife and all your kids here with you. Yeah. That was in what, by 2010? 20, yeah, it was a 20, while. 2011, 2010, 20, it, was a, it was a while on that 2011 now, period. Bun, Bun, Bun is a man stand-up dude. Dude, man, every man, listen. Everybody over at Rap a Lot is stand up. Jay, stand up. stand up, stand up, dude. Red, stand up. Wow. Everybody over there, my business partner. You know what I'm saying, Ken. He's that's one of Jay's right in. Uh, stand uh, up, man, man. Come on, man. To the bone gristle, man. Wow, that's you, hard, you, man. You can set your you can set your watch on them reliably, man. These folks are man. I'm talking about, hey, man. Stand <laughs> Straight up lace all the way. That's hard. I like it, man. I, I love to hear that, bro. Cause we you need to, and, and Jay would have to be with with the way that that he he held it down for the culture yeah. all these years. You know what I mean? He held it down, bro. Like a lot of time people be talking, man. But those eras, man. Those eras we were just talking about 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 the black unity yeah. and about the way that he was a person that stood in the midst of that too. Man. You remember yeah. Willie D the way he was rapping on them songs back yeah, in the nineties, yeah. and you know Scarface man, you never yeah. seen a man uh, cry until you seen a man die, yeah. and, and or, or, yeah. or or Bushwick. But at the end of the day, you could tell the strategy was real, and yeah. then you hear Jay speak on the yeah, yeah oh story, yeah. yeah, you know, and he would speak on those those. those it, it meant something to him. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how, how you know. Look here, man, Jay. Uh, I remember, I remember when uh, Rap a Lot was. Uh, uh, making a transition from, uh, I want to say, they were making a transition in, in a distribution or whatever the, the case was uh, from uh, from Asylum okay. right, to Universal. So, you know, in that transition, you know, everything is, you know, everything is kind of, you know, kind of held up until mm -hmm. everything gets situated, man. And Jay didn't never, Jay didn't have to do this. You know what I'm saying? I remember we were in the studio one day. I'm in the, Studio doing my thing. I can't remember what album we were working on. Jay came to me, man. Jay said, hey, Big E, let me rap to you, right? Yeah, what's going on, Jay? He said, hey, man, you know, we, we and you know everything is in transition right now. You know what I'm saying? He said, this is what we're doing. This is what's going on. And he said, you know, as soon as uh, as soon as we get all that situated, you know what I'm saying, we're going to get get everything, you know what I'm saying, everything uh, straight, and we're going to, you know, keep on Push on, yeah. did. but you know, just in the fact that you know, that's a small, that's a small thing. But Jay didn't have to come tell me that. No, no, he didn't have you, to. You get what I'm saying? No. And, and and you know what I'm saying? And I, you know, but that's that, that's just a testament to the type of brother he is, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember, man. Uh, you know, uh, Jay had, had bought some property out there in Louisiana, somewhere. It was a little uh, uh, south of Shreveport, somewhere. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It, it was. You know, a, a family retreat, man. I don't know, 50, 100 acres or something he had bought out there and he was building a family retreat out there, right? We go out there, man, and uh, Jay out there, man, Jay, you know, as, as wealthy as Jay is, right? You know, I mean, come on, now we ain't, we ain't got to even, you know, <laughs> Jay, got it. Jay that did it, right? He got so, it. man, I, out there rapping, man, we just sitting out there just rapping in the woods. Jay said, man, uh, he said, man, he had built him a nice house out there, right? He said, man, I don't even sleep in the house, man. I said, man, where you sleep at, Jay? He said, man, I sleep in the dead stand. That nigga act just like me. That's real. You get well, what you, I'm, I'm a country dude, though. Saying, yeah. But he just he just doing it because he like he probably like being outside. He like being outside in nature, man. And, That's and, real. And, you know, just just real, man. I've always, every time, man, I would um, uh, you know, be in the studio with him or wherever with him, man. You know, just sit there and rap to him, hey, man, Jay, uh. What was it like when you began, man? What was, you know, what was you know just soaking up game he from gonna, him? Jay always you know. pouring out, man. He man. always Jay loves to see black folks winning, man. Wow, that's you hard. get what I'm saying. No, and, I, and you can tell, man. Yeah. Like I said, I, I love it because I know already he represents this South, man. Yeah. Um, um, and and he's serious about it. He was serious about it. Um, I always hear the stories he tell, the book respect, yeah. and, you know, all the stuff that he's done, you know, I always followed behind and just love the movement, being an older cat, just watching it from the beginning all yeah. the way till now to see what he developed and how he developed it. 
it's just extraordinary. Even from Master P and all of the different people yeah. that say they the one, they seen him and they 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 had something to look up to. It's the same way, the same way with all of us. If you down here looking at you know what he had, what he had to go through and how he accomplished what he accomplished. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, and the same thing go with Bun. Them same thing. You know, yeah. um, they went through their ups and downs, whatever with Jive or whoever, but still stood true to the end. To he, you know, till. Pimp C passed away to the music, to the culture. And I think that's real big. You know what I mean? Nah, and then, yeah. like, like, w w how was it working with Tom Tom? Uh, have you worked with him any more since that, though? Oh, we and Tom, man, listen. Me and Tom, that, you know. Back. I was in the, let them know, I was in the video with Tom Tom. It's coming out, too. <laughs> I met Tom Tom through the oh, Row music, music at my oh, boy, okay. man. And I, I was, worked with the Row. You know, I did something on the Row's second album. Did you? Did the uh, the single M.I.A. Man, that, man, you done touched a little bit of everything. Man, come on, man. I've been around these parts, man. So Who you, haven't you worked with in Dallas that you want to work with? Did you work with Chief? Uh, no, nah, I haven't worked with Big You didn't work with, with Big Chief? Chief. No, nah, I haven't worked with Big Chief. I think yeah. Big Chief kind of stayed with Mr. E. Yeah, yeah shout I mean, out Mr. Kinda, e. We kind of, like, we kind of just, I would say, we kind of missed each other. You okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. we just, you know, you know how shit is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. But he wasn't into that boogie movement anyway, though. But no, nah, I wasn't, you know, yeah, I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 you know, you know but, but you know, but Chief is a, Chief is a, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, uh, you know, legend around these parts. He's a very right? much and a legend. Yeah. I'm about to get him back on the show, too. Yeah. I got to call him up. I'll, yeah. He don't know I'm going to keep him always. I, I got to mess yeah, with Chief him. Chief is, man, I, you know, Chief is uh, definitely, you can't really talk about, you can't, and I, not can't really, you can't talk about. Dallas hip hop man or Dallas rap without talking, talking about, about Chief, him. you mm -hmm. can't do it. You can't man. do it without talking about Tom, Tuck, and uh, uh, Poogie, Lucci, um, all of them. Pimpster, remember Pimpster? Yeah, you really. I mean, you got a bunch of people here who did a bunch of things. A lot of yeah. times, uh, Puka Leroy, Puka Leroy get left out a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna be yeah, honest yeah. with you, he did his thing. He was, he, I seen him on 106 in Park, far as the movement go. So yeah. he had a he had a situation where he was in the midst of everything as well. Yeah, so no you've doubt. had some dope people from this city to do some dope things. Don't forget about Quint Black. Quint don't Black. Yeah, don't forget about all these people, man. Yeah. You done had a nemesis which started it out for Snake, me. Snake you know, Snake Neal. Joe when Mac. That, Joe Mac is the homie. Listen, yeah. when, that, when that beat, who, Snake did that beat. Yeah. When that, when that, that dude, last it, night. Woo. Yeah. Woo. That last I work, night. Yeah. I work with Snake. Snake has mixed uh, a lot of stuff that we've done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, uh, constantly. Snake, good dude. Yeah, one hundred. You know what I'm saying? Snake always. You know, always. Uh, I got to Bobo ask you Luciano. Bobo, that's super homie, tight. One hundred. That's, know what, what I'm that's, saying? A, that's so, my yeah. dude. We talk about yeah. daily. But uh, top three producers of all time, dead or alive. Number one, Dr. Dre. That boy, Lil Dre. You, I said this first Dre we done got. It should have been. It shouldn't be. Cause I tell niggas all the time about this song. I gotta say this while I. And and B King told me, no, nah, I don't even think that was the hardest one. Uh, uh, it was uh, that uh, uh, you can find me in the club, bottle full of book. Uh, Fifty Cent in the when, club, yeah. That was the hardest beat without even Fifty Cent saying one word on that beat. And I tell people when it first, when it, when you first heard it, can you remember when you first heard that yeah, song? Yeah, come on. Man. You what you say when you heard that beat? Hard man, it's the whole the beat. Song. But it, you know the thing about I think the thing you know I work with I work with Nocturnal. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I've done a couple of songs for Nocturnal. You know that was Dre's protege. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I don't think put it like this, and and I'm, I'm not you know judging anybody, Go ahead. but I think that you know how people recognize and view Dre's production tells you how um, how you the know, respect level no not even the respect level but people's uh, uh, what do you call it uh, people's uh, aptitude okay okay for for music production because they don't because see the, the thing about Dre is this Dre is Dre has mastered you know what I'm saying the, the, the sonics of production, not only that, but putting the right thing with the right thing, making a hit. Dre is a master of that. The thing about Dre is, like Dre will sit in the studio, Nocturnal was telling me, I was talking to Nocturnal when we were working together, right? He was saying, man, Dre will sit in the studio for uh, five, six hours just EQing a snare. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, the sonics of it. And when you really listen to Dre's production, right? 
you can hear it, man. Dre, like when you listen to Dre's mixes, right? I don't want to just get super technical on it, right? Dre carves out a hole in the middle of the mix and sets the vocals right in the middle. And everything, every instrument is breathing on its own. Wow. And and when you and when you hear it all together, it creates it creates just an, a, a certain effect, you know, and 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 uh, you know, it's just it's just an effect that 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 affects you a certain kind of way. But it's the it's the man, it's the symphony of, of it. And that, that Dre is a master of that, and nobody I don't know of anybody has mastered number two that like Dre. Mm. I would say. I'll say, man, for me, Battle Cat. Okay, Battle Cat. Battle we ain't never heard that one. Battle Cat is cold. <coughs> what has he done? Uh, did everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's Jamaican, man. You I know, don't know. Uh, uh, you know, Cali is active. Battle Cat has done uh, you know, all the East Side of stuff. Yeah. Most of it, anyway. Uh, remember Snoop uh, Snoop and uh, what's the boy uh, the, the past? Uh Nipsey? Nipsey. No, no, the but. youngster that died. Um, well, he's not, he's not a youngster. Look, uh, it used to be with Snoop. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea about not me. Not Nate, though. No, no. Um, I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster. That whole go hard. Uh, what's what's that him. dude's name? What's, what is that dude's name, man? The little dude. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> no, I don't want anybody. I know the uh, song. I know that song. But, but Battle Cat produced that that song. Right? Let, let, let me ask you this: uh, Who do you think number three is? I gotta get this out of you before I get you out of here. I would say, God damn man, that's, that that three is a is a hard is a hard. It's man. always the hardest one. Um, He's got to call everybody. There's so inside. many. There's so many. Who you think? Narrow it down. Be honest, man. I would have to. It, man, you know what? <laughs> man, I got to throw Mike Dean in there, man. Okay, okay. And, and I don't even know if that's the, that's the right order, but I got to throw Mike Dean, man. Mike Dean, Mike Dean, Mike go Dean, hard, man. Mike Dean, man. Out of out of the young people, who do you who do you see that you like younger than yourself? Producers, uh, producer wise, uh, Metro Booming. Metro Boomin. Um, boy, um, what's the boy? Um, uh, he's down there with, uh, I like the Honorable C Note. Okay. Um, what's the dude, man? Um, he produces, uh, produces a lot of stuff. His tag is on, a, um, something on the beat. Uh, what is his name? Busted on the beat? Uh, mustard on the beat. I said bust uh, mustard. Mustard is cold too. I like I like mustard. Uh, but but now I'm, I'm not thinking about mustard. I'm thinking of man, man, it's a bunch of Mike Will listen, made it. It's so it's, many it's different producers, bro. Them y'all niggas are serious. You know, I, man, I salute all those youngsters, <laughs> man. To, to tell you the truth, because they, they're doing that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's I got Double hard. A, man. Double A is a hard producer. Now, double A, what did he produce? He, double A did a lot of NBA young boy stuff. Yeah, okay. And then I had Tago on here just here recently, and what, what Ziggy it? made it. Ziggy made See, it. I'm not I, Ziggy made it. Is producers for Yellow Bees of them right now? Uh, uh, he, uh, Low D's son. Oh, okay. Ziggy made yeah, it go okay. hard. He do a lot he for Gunna for music. Gunna too. music. Yeah. Uh, he just did one for. Uh, what he do for Yellow? He do for Kodak Black. Yeah, he just did one for Kodak. What he do for Yellow? Yeah. What he do for Yellow? Man, it's a bunch of them. I'd have to pull it up, but I I know I know uh, we go over them every time when I interview yeah, them. I, I, I have them to, in there. Yeah, nah, you be you, listening you, to a lot of yellow. You'll, you'll, hear, yellow. you'll hear his tag. It's, yeah. It always says Ziggy his name. Ziggy made yellow, it. Yellow, that's my homie, man. man. Matter of fact, I'll tell you a story about Yellow, man. Uh, for, well, I don't know. I think it was the first time he met he met Bun. He him and Bun got together in the studio. You know, we, me and Yellow went down to Houston together. I really? told him, Bun had called me, said... Uh, Hey man, it's time to go back into the studio, man. We work it, right? And I, you know, Yellow was coming through the studio real tough. Um, and so I was like, shit, man, Yellow, uh, you know, shit, you wanna go down to Houston, fuck around the studio with Bun? He's like, yeah, shit, we wrote this before, you know, this before. Before, that, before the, Because the, the way I met Yellow, he was over there uh, at the time working with DJ Deuce. Okay. This is when he put the country rap tunes out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, 
Yeah, yeah man, you, you know, you, you shit, you, you the homie, homie, and they shit, you the homie. <laughs> you get what yeah. I'm saying, being me and Yellow, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know, mob down to uh, the Houston, got in the studio, a bun, and, and but uh, and uh, you know, him and, him, him and Bun connected. They connected, and then uh, you know, but Yellow was already making moves because Yellow was real cool. At the, you know, Yellow was real cool because he uh, we had gotten the studio with Sauce Walker there. Yeah, down there, and you know, Yellow was you know was uh, was in with those boys, and I you know I didn't know those cats. You wow. know what I'm saying? But they was you know. So Yellow, Yellow's the homie. And yeah, I, I always, I always loved uh, his music. I say it all the time. And Yellow is another. As far as when I when I first heard him trapping yeah. design and all that, that was that yeah. was one of them thing. I'm in the stove, man. Stop playing. Yeah, yeah. Yellow is another dude, man. Yellow has always been one hundred, man. That's hard. Always, man. Yellow is, is is a solid dude, man. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen anything. Flawed in that brother, man. You know what That's I'm saying. It. Yellow is always you hanging out in the studio up. with these niggas, so you yeah. know if they flawed. And just in, in real life, man. I, you know, but just a testament to to uh, to the to the character of, of Yellow Beasy, right? I remember, hell, man. He came. He did a show at the House of Blues, and this is after you know he had blown up, right? Man, this brother had all these uh, acts from Dallas. And reached and reached into all of them, brought reached out to all of them, and brought them on that stage, and let them get down with Money Bag Yo or whoever else he had out there. You remember that? No, I don't remember, but yeah, I, I, know, a, I know, I know, I know how. To, that's a hard, that's a hard thing to do in the midst of your your success. To be honest, yeah. which I gotta ask you this before you get off here: uh, How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to get a hold of you? Well, you can get at me, uh, and, you know, uh, hit me on the Instagram, man. Okay, it's a, it's a big E beat. Man, on it's a biggie beat. Y'all know what it is, man. Stop playing. Y'all heard the tags, man. Check it, man. Hey, man. Uh, man, thank you for coming on the show. Hey, man. We love you, you, bro. Thank you for having me, man. Love nah, this ain't the too, last man. time, is it? Nah, nah. You gonna man. come back whenever and hang Come out on, with man. me? You gonna do some co-hosting with me? Hey, man, as long as we breathe. Check man. it, man. You know hey, man, it's been man, another man. great segment, man, of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.